Welcome back. So that happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, AFC Championship game um, over just about, I don't know, I guess it's been about it's about about an hour ago or so. 45 minutes or so. Um, we had plenty of time to think about this game. Obviously, the... Uh, the Bengals beat the Chiefs 27-24 in overtime. A uh, monumental collapse. That's that's all I can say. That's all I can say on the Chiefs' part. Um, you know, I, I Joe Burrow didn't play particularly well. I mean, he played good enough, and he had some really big uh, third-down conversions in the second half. But you know, his his numbers were average. You know, good enough to win on a day where Patrick Mahomes pissed down his leg completely in the second half. The Chiefs were blowing the door off this uh, off this game in the first half and um, I'm going to get to how why I think the game changed and what happened there. Of course, I'm not I'm not a professional, you know, NFL analyst or anything. I don't you know, never played football, so I'd, you know, there's a lot of things about the game maybe I don't understand. And uh, but it's just here it's, I'm just a fan offering my um, offering my perspective on the game. So this is my instant, my instant raw reaction. And I did it last year at the Super Bowl, and uh, you know, gave all the congratulations to the to the Buccaneers. That one was a little easier to do because the Buccaneers just destroyed the Chiefs last year, and there was really nothing I don't think the Chiefs could have done. I, I remember making the statement that if they play that game ten times, it's probably they probably win five or you know, go five and five. Maybe maybe they lose. Maybe they maybe they only win four of them, but I don't know if it plays out exactly that way. This game played out eerily similar to the first game in Week 17, and I didn't think that was going to happen. Now I did say in my prediction video that I released that I that I posted right before um, the game started. I remember I did say that uh, I thought it was less likely that the Bengals would that it would be a back and forth game than to have the same thing happen in that game. So, but what I what I meant by that was the same thing. It was like to get a lot of calls go their way, a lot of the 50-50 balls go their way. That didn't really happen. I, th there was some weird, some weird stuff with non-penalty calls, but there was some of that for both sides. Um, and again, that's one of the things I'm going to talk. To. I got I got a list of things I want to talk about this game. Uh, the first thing is is to congratulate the Cincinnati Bengals for going to, to the Super Bowl, their third Super Bowl in franchise history, and uh, they deserve to be there. Um, there was there was nothing there was nothing fluky about what happened in this game. They deserve to be there. The Chiefs did not deserve to win this game, and uh, the Bengals did. The Bengals did more than the Chiefs did to win. That's why they're going to the Super Bowl. And the Chiefs aren't. And now. Burrow was class act on the field, you know, he was very respectful, you know, and uh, did things the right way. Eli Apple is complete trash, and because of Eli Apple, I'm going to pull, I usually pull for the AFC team in the Super Bowl unless it's Tom Brady, but I'm definitely pulling for the 49ers or the Rams now, um, just because of Eli Apple and just trying to start a Twitter war with Tyreek Hill, calling him a baby, and then Tyreek Hill responded to him and said, he's basically said, Hit me up, bro, if you want to talk. Not doing this. <laughs> I, the dude made one good play in the game, you know, stopping Hill from getting a touchdown there at the end of the half, and um, he was he was getting burnt the entire first half. And it wasn't like he was playing well in the second half either. Something about Mahomes wasn't getting Tyreek Hill the ball when Hill was open on several several different occasions. Um, so yeah, all right, so. Let's get into it. Uh, first half, man, I it's exactly the way I thought the game was going to go. I, I, the Chiefs were up twenty-one to three. They were they weren't sacking Burrow, but they were pressuring him. He was off. He was throwing incompletions. Uh, they were being really conservative, and the Chiefs were just just blasting the doors off the barn. Um, Mahomes at one point was like fourteen of fifteen, and the only incompletion was like a was a throwaway. Um, 
and it it looked like it was going to be a, it looked like it was going to be a repeat of the Pittsburgh game. It really did. Uh, the Bengals looked lost on defense. They looked lost on offense. The crowd was really bothering Joe Burrow. You could tell. Um, and then they get the and then then the Cincinnati drives down and gets a touchdown on a on a screen pass to um, what's that guy's uh, Perrine, Sammy Perrine, or I think that's his name, Perini. Um, very poor tackling by the Chiefs there, but the Chiefs were still up eleven at that point. And and similar to the game in Cincinnati, the Chiefs had the opportunity to get a touchdown at the end of the right before the half. And uh, of course, they got the touchdown, but it was called back on a hold on a kickoff return. And now the Chiefs drive down the field with about a minute, about a minute and ten to go, and uh, they're basically at the what they were at the they were, they were at the one yard line. First, first and goal at the one after the penalty on on the uh, on the hold in the end zone, the pass interference in the end zone. Now with nine, there was nine seconds left. You can't run a you can't run a run play there. You have to pass. Uh, first, and the first pass was was thrown at the feet of the receiver. He didn't like his option, so he threw it. A, basically, threw it away, but made sure he threw it at somebody so it wouldn't be uh, intentional grounding. But it took four seconds there, and there was five seconds left. And I remember thinking they probably should just kick the field goal here, just take the points and go up 14 at the half. Um, but Mahomes convinced Andy Reid that he was going to score, and Andy's you know Andy's has Andy has every reason to believe him. I mean, Mahomes isn't perfect, but when have you seen him fail in a situation like that? Well, he what happened? I think Mahomes got really really greedy there. You know, he passed the ball to – so on the second down play, he threw the ball to Tyreek Hill at the four-yard line. I, and there's two guys out there, and there's nobody – nobody's out there helping block. That's 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 not a pass that you can throw. You have to throw to the end zone there. Um, you have to throw to the end zone to have any chance of getting the field goal off. Uh, it's just just a terrible, terrible decision on Patrick Mahomes' part. Um, it almost looked like it was kind of a, a an audible type play that, you know, he, I, I you know I don't know if that happened or not, but th- it was definitely something that um, that they shouldn't have done. Mahomes made a huge, huge mistake there, and left three points on the field. And Robinson was open. Could have got the ball to Robinson if he'd have passed it immediately, and it would have been a touchdown. But again, Mahomes didn't see it, and that was a that was a recurring theme from that play on. You know, they they get the ball to start the second half, and of course, I'm thinking, okay, we didn't get the, we didn't get the, we didn't score at the end of the second half, but we can go down and score here. And then it was, I think they got a first down, but then they punted, and then they got the, then they but they stopped the Bengals. And then the Chiefs got the ball back, and the three plays it out. And it was just, what is going on? And the Bengals got 11 points in the third quarter and um, tied the game, 21 all. And I'm like, what has happened here? And it seemed like, it, it, what it seemed like it, it was like, it was like every drive was a repeat. It was like, first and 10, let's run the ball and pick up four yards. Second and six, let's throw an incompletion. Third and six, let's take a sack and then punt the ball. That was basically the second half for the Chiefs. Um, you know, there were some there there were some plays that you know with the balls going off off Hill's hand one time when he could, probably should have made a catch. Uh, Ty, you know, Travis Kelsey definitely a catch he could have made on one of those drives as well that went off his hands. It was that was the pass that Mahomes threw. It was kind of the lob pass. You know, we saw Mixon make that make that catch. You know, for the uh, for the Bengals in the game. Kelsey usually makes that catch, and he didn't make it. And again, that's those 50-50 balls, and they didn't go the Chiefs' way in the second half. And credit to the Bengals' defense for making the necessary adjustments. But Andy Reid and company, they should have obviously they saw what the Bengals did in the second half, you know, in Cincinnati in Week 17, and making the adjustments. Why? Why were they not doing the same thing this time? Why did they not? They. <laughs> this is this is just my raw 
unfiltered emotions here. I, I just, I don't even know why. I'm just asking a rhetorical question. We know the answer to it. So we see on the screen here, just the box score, uh, McKinnon, uh, 12 carries for 65 yards, five and a half yards a carry. Clyde edwards hilaire six carries for 36 yards, six yards a carry. McCall Hardman had two carries for 18 yards. And even Mahomes averaged six and a half yards a carry, just about. This is what the Chiefs should have done, especially maybe by the second or third drive of the second half was, look, obviously the the passing game has has stalled for whatever reason. And I'm going to put that on Mahomes. Mahomes looked all world in the first half. He was, he looked like he was in, you know, demigod mode. In the second half, you know, I made a I made a point on the video a couple times, you know, the, when we did the Madden simulations, I said uh, I said to my son that at Mahomes is worse, he's still A tier. You know, you have S tier, A tier, and then B, C, D, and F. I mean, at his worst today, he was definitely C or D tier. wasn't A tier. That second half was 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 awful. I don't I don't fault him with the second half of the game in Cincinnati in Week 17 because he only had the ball three times, and he did make one mistake in that game on the field goal drive. He could have got a touchdown, but in this game, he had every opportunity. It was laid out there in front of him, and he failed. He flat out failed, and if Patrick Mahomes is the player that we um, want him to be and think he is, then he needs to own it as the team leader, as the as the quarterback of what I still consider the best team in the AFC. Even though they lost this game, um, you know that's a, that's a tough that that he's going to have to really dig down internalize it and find out how he's going to make himself better because the quarterback position makes other people better. Okay. People talk about how Mahomes is only good because of Hill and Kelsey. Well, you saw the second half. I, I mean, he wasn't getting the ball to him. Well, he got the ball to Kelsey four, uh, five times in the second half. Um, Kelsey had five catches for 40 yards in the second half. And, but, uh, and then Hardman had one catch and I think Pringle had one catch. But nobody, and then uh, McKinnon had one catch. But then, but Tyree Kill didn't have a single catch in the second half, uh, and he was only targeted a handful of times. That, how do you do that? That's not on Tyreek. So if Tyree, if Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey are the ones that make Mahomes better, as everyone told us all last week after the Chiefs beat the Bills, well then, what's your explanation for this game? Is it the opposite? <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Now. The quarterback makes the players around him better. He takes really good players and makes them great. He takes average players and makes them good. He takes exceptional players and makes them superstars. That's what good quarterbacks do, or great quarterbacks do. That's what they do. I mean, Bengal fans, if there are any Bengal fans watching this, do you really think that if you had um, Daniel Jones as your quarterback, that Jamar Chase would be, or Jamar Chase and T. Higgins would would look like they do? <laughs> no, because Daniel Jones is not a good quarterback. So, but Burrow makes those guys better. They are already great players, and your quarterback makes them better. That's the same thing with Mahomes. Now, the, the flip side, when the quarterback fails, the entire offense looks like it sucks. But I'm looking at these stats here. Look, 24 carries, 139 yards, 5.8 yards a carry. The Chiefs should not have abandoned the run in the second half. That was a big deal. And now, granted, time and situation, a lot of things happen. But, again, look at this. Mahomes sacked four times. Burrow was sacked once. One time. After being sacked nine times, he was sacked four times in the first game at, back in Week 17. Mahomes took – one of these sacks was oh, – I, I didn't really care about. It was the uh, – it was the sack on the second down play right there at the end of the game. Um, they kept the clock moving. I know Tony Romo said, oh, no, that's a terrible sack. You know, the one that got him back to the nine. Um, I, I didn't have I didn't have that much of an issue with that sack. Um, just because it kept the clock moving. But the rest of it, it's just, it's just inexcusable on Mahomes' part. 
you know, he's human. He's going to have some games where he doesn't play um, at, at the best. Uh, and so when he doesn't, he needs to own it. And so I haven't, I haven't watched any of the press conferences, you know, as a Chiefs fan, you know, it's pretty raw still. You know, I'm not super pissed off. I mean, it is what it is. Sports is sports. It's a game. You know, you know, 20 years ago, I would be just, I would be breaking things. I'd be tearing phone books in half. No, nah, not really. <laughs> but you know how it is. Um, but it was Mahomes' decision-making and lack of decision-making ability in the second half. Especially on that last that last drive, the the field goal drive, the, where they got the field goal to tie the game to send it to overtime. You know, on the play where he took the sack, way back before the field goal, the play before the field goal, Travis Kelsey was open. And the play before that, Tyree Kill was open, and he didn't get him the ball. And I and I remember saying as the play was about to happen, I said to my son, I said, "You've got to look for Travis Kelsey here. You got to look for your best player and in, in the end zone in these type of spots." And Kelsey, Kelsey ran a simple, he ran a simple, he ran out, and then the slant, or ran the, uh, whatever the, that route is called, um, he just turned and ran sideways. It's almost impossible to stop. And as soon as, he, as soon as he makes that turn, there's another defender that was, you know, so the play was going, you know, he was running um, from my right to my left. Um, or maybe it's reverse with how you're looking at the camera. But in the same way, if Kelsey's here, the defender, if Kelsey's here, the defender is right here behind him, and he, Kelsey is running this way. And the, there's another defender over here. Well, as soon as he makes that turn, Mahomes has a window to pass the ball to, right here to make the catch before this guy can react. And because this guy had to hold because there were other receivers over here, I definitely could have hit Kelsey there. There was a there was a large enough window. I mean, the window that he threw into for the game winning touchdown last week against the Bills, which much smaller than what he had the opportunity there for a potential game winning touchdown uh, for the Chiefs today. And but he didn't do it. And even when they won the coin toss, I was I was still pretty down. I was like, you know, they still have to go down and score. And what had we seen in the second half that gave me any confidence they were going to go down the field and score? I mean, they. I wasn't going to doubt Mahomes because I've seen Mahomes do it so many times. But, you know, there was a – I'm not going to say it was a bad pass on first down because he had to throw it over the – over um, – was it Hendrickson? So I think that was his name, the defensive end for Cincinnati. You know, he, he jumped and raised, put his hands up, and he had to get the ball over his hands, so he, he didn't want to bat it down and throw an interception. And so it was a uh, so it was over his receiver's head, and then the second down play should have been should have been a walk off uh, int for a win, uh, like what Tony Romo was saying on the broadcast. And then third down, I, I don't know what he was I don't know what he was doing throwing into. It was basically like I'm just going to throw it up to to Hill and see if he can make a catch, double covered, and then I, I don't I don't get it. It was a low percentage pass. It was a terrible pass, and. That was that was the ball game at that point. So, ah, uh, yeah, lots of soul searching that's going to be needed by the Chiefs this this off season. Um, they're gonna they need another wide receiver. Maybe McCole Hardman is that guy. But when I when you look here, I mean, Hardman had three catches for fifty two yards and a touchdown. I, I I mean I I really think they need a possession. Uh, like a big bodied receiver to do, to do more than, I mean, Byron Pringle is a nice compliment to have, but Pringle's not overly talented. He's, he's a good guy to have on the team. He's a good special teams guy. He's going to make some good catch. He's had a decent season, but you know, he's, he's not your third wide receiver. He, he shouldn't be. And Demarcus Robinson, look at three targets, no catches. Demarcus Robinson's a free agent. I don't expect the Chiefs to bring him back this, you know, for next year. They they need to replace. They need to really upgrade Robinson's position and and upgrade to a better wide receiver. Maybe e- e- through the draft or um, maybe in free agency. I I don't know. I mean, they need a better option there than Demarcus Robinson and Byron Pringle for that third spot, and just and go from there. And I something else I noticed that I about Mahomes was the uh, just the lack of staying in the pocket. The Chiefs offensive line played really well today. Excuse me. They played really, really well. And But Mahomes, especially in the second half, just 
got way too much happy feet. And there's a guy that does a lot of uh, analysis on on he 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 tracks every single snap that Mahomes does, and he has his entire career. Uh, his name is Seth Kaiser, and he he's on Twitter. He's got his own web page too, and um, he does a tremendous job of charting what Mahomes does. I'd be interested to see what his take is on this um, and how much Mahomes was just happy feeding it in the second half and just bailing out and just trying to schoolyard, you know, the play as opposed to just taking what the defense was given. And see, that's what, that was what was so disappointing to me was that throughout the entire first seven games of the season, Mahomes was doing what we saw today in the second half, just playing street football. And then it was like, dude, just take what the defense gives you. And then all the, you know, the experts, they were like, ah, well, you, you know, Mahomes isn't throwing deep anymore. He's just checking it down. He's checked down Mahomes. You know, I don't care if he's checked down Mahomes if, if the Chiefs are winning. But what was it in that, you know, that they did last week? Mahomes didn't throw a single pass over 20 yards in the air. Now, some passes went longer than 20 yards, but he didn't throw a pass longer than 20 yards. And lo and behold, they... Uh, were very successful because they did what they took what the what the Bills gave them. In the second half against the Bengals, it's like they went back to week five. It's like they went back to the week five Kansas City offense. And I, I just I just don't understand that. Um, the Cincinnati defense has a role to play there, absolutely. And they caused pressure and they caused Mahomes to bail out in some of those times. But that was that was just a handful of third down plays. Mahomes did a lot of this to himself. And He's going to have to live with it. So the last thing I want to talk about, because I made such a big deal about it, talking about it in all my other videos, is, is officiating. And so I said, you know, that Bill Vinovich is the crew. Bill Vinovich is the crew. Now, granted, it's not Bill Vinovich's crew. He's the head referee, but it was, you know, they pick other referees and other officials um, that have had good, good marks. They put him with Bill Vinovich. And uh, the comment was made, essentially, that Vinovich, as a, as a head referee, his crew... His crews throw the least amount of flags. And they definitely lived up to that billing today. Uh, they let them play. Now, there were some calls that should have been called. You know, the, uh, the pat, there should probably should have been a pass interference called on, I think it was Ward, on the, on the Bengals receiver in the first half in the end zone where the Bengals ultimately got a field goal. Uh, probably should have been called for a pass interference there. And when it's obvious, it needs to be called, in my opinion. If if one player doesn't have a have an advantage over another player, it then it, I don't think you should call it. But if but if there is an advantage given, they need to call it, and or if, or if it's egregious enough. So you know that so there's there's Bengal fans. There's one for you that should have been called absolutely, and I I agreed with that. That should have been called. Um, the. Uh, the punt that Hardman fielded and that the, uh, the player ran into him and then Hardman had the, uh, <laughs> the James Harden flop <laughs> to, to kind of sell it. Look, I don't think the ref was going to call a penalty. Some people were saying, well, because he flopped like that, that's why the ref didn't you know, throw a flag. I don't think he was going to flow, throw a flag regardless. I mean, if, if Hardman just shrugged it off and act like nothing happened, the referee definitely wasn't going to do anything. Um, but I, I think if Hardman had just maybe, Taking the hit, and it, granted, it was a very soft hit. It wasn't a hit, but like I said, it goes back to letter of the law versus the intent of the law. Um, but again, he did hit him after he called for a fair catch. And it wasn't that hard of a hit, but it was still a hit. Probably should have been a fl flag, but it wasn't really that hard of a hit. And then, so I can kind of go both ways. Again, letter of the law says it should be a penalty. Intent of the law, you're there to make sure that the player calling the fair catch doesn't get hurt that's the reason for the rule okay so there's so they're not you know absolutely decapitated you know figuratively speaking and then fumble the ball when all they're trying to do is catch it you know um that's the whole reason for that rule and so if you break that so that's he didn't break the intent of the rule the letter of the law yeah so i wasn't really that upset about him not throwing a flag there that but again it could have been called but yeah they were letting them they were letting really let them play both ways now a few plays later when hardman was clearly out of bounds and took a shot on the sideline definitely should have been a penalty there definitely should have been a penalty and they didn't call one um 
there at the end of the game, right before the game-winning field goal, uh, too many men on the line of scrimmage. Should have been the illegal formation. They didn't call that. That definitely should have been called as well. So that, that's where I say, like, procedural penalties, you can't ignore those, okay? Holding, pass interference, things like that, those th- which can sometimes be subjective versus intent of the law versus letter of the law, uh, You can I can somehow, you know, get away or make reasons or make a case either way for that. But pre-snap penalties, you know, false starts, delay of games, which they called those. Um, but, the you know, the illegal formation was definitely, that was definitely missed. Now, did it have any ramification? Look, McPherson hasn't missed a kick in the entire playoffs. What are they doing? Going to move him back? Or he's, now he's going to kick a 45-yard field goal? Or who is to say that they don't get it right back down to the 5 or 10-yard line the next play anyway? I mean, it was... It was Andy. It was Andy Reid in desperation mode, trying to get them to make that change there. Um, I actually thought when they were stopping it, I thought that maybe that the that the uh, whoever was it Mac or not Mac, it was a uh, Mixon. Well, I think it was Mixon that got down there, and I thought that he released the ball and put it on the ground before the whistle blew, and the Chiefs player picked it up. And actually, I actually what I thought. Andy Reid was going to argue about that. Hey, you know, he fumbled there when there was no whistle and we had a clear recovery. Um, but the announcers didn't say anything about it. And I'm like, okay, well, and they never even showed it. So I, you know, I don't have DVR, so I didn't go back and look at it. Um, that was, that was me just like being maybe a little too hopeful <laughs> that something was going to happen. You know, even when he kicked the game winning field goal, I was like, can we get a block? Where's Albert Lewis when you need him? <laughs> You know the, the 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 specialist there who was really good at blocking field goals and punts, but it wasn't meant to be today. And you know, and the Bengals move on. And you know, I, I'm not going to cheer for him just because of Eli Apple and his comments to Tyree Kill on social media. I'm sorry. It's I I would have maybe liked to see you see you win, but now I'm definitely not rooting for you. So now that being said, I think they probably will. Uh, beat the Rams or the uh, 49ers. Looks like the Rams are up 8.46 to go here in the second half or second quarter. So probably will be the Rams. Just, you know, so let's, right before I end here, I got 27 minutes in. Um, Let's talk about, you know, since I'm a Chiefs fan, what do we do going forward as Chiefs fans or what do the Chiefs need to do going forward? And I talked a little bit about that with wide receiver. Um, the first thing is the first thing they need to do is put this behind them as hard as that's going to be. They need to put this behind them and realize that they're not going to win every game. And we saw today that Patrick Mahomes is not a perfect quarterback. And me as a Kansas City fan, I have been spoiled watching him play. And, you know, I watching the Super Bowl last year when we got just the we just got blown out. I still I didn't make excuses for Mahomes, but I but he Mahomes played his tail off in that game, and he was getting no help. You know he was throwing to receivers who were open, and they were, the ball was hitting off their face mask, or he was hitting them in the hands, and the ball would just fall. You know, Mahomes was doing, and he was throwing passes as he was parallel to the ground. That that was the same pass that hit Williams right in the face mask. He didn't even in the end zone. <laughs> um, he did everything in his power to to try to get his team back in that game last you know last year in the Super Bowl and just and that's when I really was like you know what I really believe in this guy and he did a great job honestly this year too um, which is why this game was so hard to stomach the sec- second half and just seeing him make the poor decisions that he did you have never seen him make as many poor decisions in one game and especially in the biggest stage um, you know so Next season, when the you know when it's when, the, when it comes back down to it, if the Chiefs are fortunate enough to be back in the AFC Championship game, whether it's hosting or somewhere else, doesn't matter. If they're fortunate enough to be back, they need to realize what this feels like. This is a lot different than when we lost to the Patriots, you know, four years ago, and that one, that one stung. But that was our first time, you know, getting that far in a long time with a quarterback that we believed in. So we every every Kansas City fan, while we wanted to win that game. We had this feeling that 
we're gonna we're gonna get back. We're gonna be back here, and we're gonna take the next step." And they did. They won the Super Bowl the next year. Um, but they need to they need to build off this. You know, I I said I think Andy Reid and company were saying that it, the season doesn't end in the Super Bowl when it's a failure. In my opinion, you get to the Super Bowl, it's a success. Okay, that's it's really really hard. Now I will call this season a failure. I I absolutely will call it a failure. They lost three games they shouldn't have lost in the regular season, and then they completely choked away this game this win this game here today. They should have won this game. Um, no question about it. Even as poorly as they played the second half, their defense did just enough against Joe Burrow and that offense to win. And this is only the third time in Patrick Mahomes' career where the opposing team scored less than 30 points and the Chiefs lost. So, all the stats that I brought out for defending the Chiefs all week long, they all came back and bit me in the butt. All of them. Every single one of them. Um, Burrow didn't take any... You know, he took one sack. Um, but for the most part, he wasn't sacked. He wasn't. He was pressured. And the defense, like I said, they played... They played good enough to win. It was the offense that let the Chiefs down, led by Patrick Mahomes. So where do we go from, from here? Let's First of all, I want to put things in perspective. A lot of fans out there that are mad. Um, you know, they want to see, I'm, I'm sure Bengal fans want to see me as, you know, getting on here and saying, you know, and complaining about the officiating or complaining about this or that. And I'm like, no, you guys, you guys won. You guys won fair and square. And congratulations on the win. But I want to put this in perspective for all the other fans out there who are fans of other teams. And I, there's a guy I work with. Uh, he was a Detroit Lions fan, and I just I don't even know what that's like being a, a Detroit Lions fan. So let's 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 run through here what the Chiefs have done in the past four years. Number one seed, AFC Championship game, and they lose to Tom Brady. Okay, that's number one. Number two, they win the Super Bowl. Number three. Number one seed, make it to the Super Bowl and lose to Tom Brady. Number four, host the AFC Championship game for the fourth consecutive year and then lose to the Bengals, and they don't go to the Super Bowl. So they're 2-2 two and two in the AFC Championship game, all of them at home. They're 1-1 one and one in the Super Bowl. How many other teams in the NFL would kill for that resume? Okay, so one Super Bowl win in four years. I really think that the, the Chiefs probably should have another win in there. Probably should have won in 18. If D4 doesn't line up offside, I still think they would have beaten the Rams in that game. But again, you don't know. You know, one Super Bowl win in four years with making it twice and getting to four conference championship games. Look, it's better than the four-year run Andy Reid had with the Eagles where he made one Super Bowl and lost it, where he was one and three. But it's, he's only one game better than that run, now that looking back on it. With an unknown for if he would have made a second Super Bowl, would he have won it? So maybe this is the ceiling for Andy Reid teams. Maybe they just can't get to that next level. And at the end, um, at the end of the day, the Chiefs need better consistent play out of their offense they need better consistent play of their defense. Even though their defense played well today, and I, even though they lost, they played well enough to win. Um, they need they need better prep. They need guys that can actually get the sack. They need a defensive end who actually has a motor. Frank Clark looks old. He's not even 30 years old, but he looks old. They need better guys on that line to get to the quarterback. And that's what I think they, they should focus on defensive ends. They should focus on um, on wide receiver and safety safeties in the uh, in the draft I like what they're doing at linebacker I, I really like what their defensive tackles uh, their offensive line I, I really like it I think I think they probably could use another offensive lineman a right tackle um, we'll see we'll see what they do so I'm at 35 minutes here almost 35 minutes it's uh, I need to wrap this up so again congratulations to the Cincinnati Bengals for beating the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game you guys have moved on to the Super Bowl looks like the, oh, looks like the Rams and the 49ers are now tied at seven so um, but again I'll, I'll tell you good luck in the Super Bowl but I'm not gonna be pulling for you just because of your idiotic cornerback Eli Apple just running his mouth on Twitter and not being gracious in, in victory you know that is one thing that I think a lot of 
players can learn from different Chiefs players is how to lose how to lose with dignity and how to win with dignity. Um, look, it is what it is. So, but it's going to be interesting to hear some of the fallout from this. I probably won't partake in it because you know, look, I'm a fan like anybody else. I like it when my team wins, and I don't I don't like listening to analysis when my team loses. So. Now I just got to see if they're actually going to have a baseball season this year. You know, <laughs> see if we can see uh, Bobby Witt Jr. actually play a game for the Royals and, or if the uh, season's going to be canceled. So anyway, last year when I made this video after they lost, my video went viral. I have 119 subscribers right now, and I had like 13 last year, and but somehow my video just went nuts. It went viral. It hit all the algorithms. I'm going to try to do the same thing this time. We'll see if it happens. If only five people watch it, that's great. But hey, if you do like this video, whether you're a Bengals fan, a Chiefs fan, an NFL fan, give me a give me a like. If you think I'm an idiot, post a comment in the section in the comment section below, and we can fight about it. You know, because that's what people do on social media, right? They fight about stupid, stupid things. Um, if you found my channel, you're a sports fan, and you also like video games. I do a lot of video game content on the channel. I'm in the process of doing uh, Mass Effect. Uh, the movie, which is basically taking the the playthrough and editing it down to make it look like a like a Netflix show, um, about halfway through the second game. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. Here in about three weeks, I'm going to be live streaming uh, Horizon Forbidden West on the PS5. Uh, so if you're looking forward to uh, seeing what what that sequel is to one of the best games that came out in 2017, uh, give my channel a try. There's gonna there's a lot of content, a lot of great games coming out this year. I'm going to be covering quite a few of them. Um, it's going to be a fun time. You know, with Starfield coming out, obviously Horizons Forbidden West. Uh, again, if you just found this and you're a sports fan and you don't care about video games, that's fine. Don't don't worry about it. But, hey, if you like that stuff too, consider, consider giving me a subscription um, and come back with the video game content. So, anyway, guys, thanks a lot. It was a really fun season with the Chiefs. Too bad it ended the way it did as a, as a fan. But, you know, congratulations to the Bengals for moving out of the Super Bowl. Talk to you later, guys. Have a good one.